Milky Way is a wild and often terrifying place. Great orbs of fire and nuclear fury churn for billions of years at a time, entrancing objects who could feel its pull and devouring those who come too close, akin to a cosmological version of the great sci- Black holes prowl the corner and darkest fringes of open space, distorting time itself and wreaking havoc on any form of matter that's unfortunate enough to interact with them. Then there's bolts of planet vaporizing radiation that shoot across the void, space rocks and chunk of ice that have the potential to turn even stable, vibrant worlds into, well, nothing. And through all of that, there's the impending countdown to collision with a neighboring galaxy, a cataclysm that guarantees that millions upon millions of stars will be cast out to intergalactic space forever. But it's not all bad, because our Milky Way can provide us with at least one simple joy, at least one thing that can stoke childlike innocence rather than pure terror, and leave us feeling as if our time in this galaxy is more of a birthday party and less of eternal damnation. And you guessed it, probably from the title of today's episode, that the Milky Way's got bubbles. So let's learn about them. What are Fermi bubbles? So look, if you're a hardcore space nerd, like us, you'll most certainly know the name Enrico Fermi. An Italian nuclear physicist who won a Nobel Prize for his work, Fermi was long among the world's leading experts on atomic science, and he was a brilliant theorist who lived on the absolute cutting edge of 20th century astrophysics. But Fermi bubbles weren't named in Enrico Fermi's honor just because Fermi was some fun-loving jokester who ran around the Manhattan Projects blowing bubbles. No, no, no. Instead, they earned their name for two key reasons. They were discovered by the Fermi Gamma Ray Space Telescope, which of course bears Fermi's name, and the bubbles themselves emit the same stuff Fermi spent most of his life studying, gamma rays and other extremely high-frequency cosmic radiation. The bubbles themselves are large clouds of energy-charged plasma oriented directly over and under the center of the Milky Way. It takes only a brief look to see what makes them so special. Although our spiral galaxy is oriented on a mostly flat plane in space, these Fermi bubbles are orientated perpendicular to the rest of the galaxy, placed in directions that we, from our human perspective, would perceive as up and down. Visually, they look something like an hourglass shape. One Fermi bubble travels up from the center of the galaxy, ballooning outward and then rounding back off, and another does the same thing at the bottom. And these are the sorts of anomaly that demands a little bit more explanation. And look, we've got to emphasize here that these Fermi bubbles aren't small. Each one stretches some 25,000 light years from their anchor point at the center of the Milky Way. For context, the Milky Way itself has a radius of just 52,000-ish light years, making the Fermi bubbles about half as tall from the Milky Way's center as the galaxy is long, so they're rather large. The plasma that they're comprised of emits incredible amounts of cosmic radiation, X-rays emitted from the outer fringes of each bubble in almost an eggshell-like arrangement of less energetic plasma, while the more energetic plasma inside that cosmic eggshell emits pure gamma rays. These are the most powerful electromagnetic waves in the known universe, emitted by black holes, supernovas, neutron stars, and, well, here on Earth, nuclear blasts. The space they inhabit is extremely hot, some 3.9 million degrees Celsius, or 7 million Fahrenheit on average, with their innermost parts expected to be quite a bit hotter than that. The bubbles are currently expanding outward at a rate of 3.5 million kilometers per hour, or 2.2 million miles per hour, less than 1% the speed of light, but still, we've actually got no idea. The origins of the bubbles are basically unknown, although they're being actively researched and they weren't expected to be found when scientists explored the center of our galaxy. They aren't predicted by any human theories on how the Milky Way formed or how it currently works, and the mechanism that creates and sustains them is basically unknown to us. We also don't know whether they're just a Milky Way thing or whether every galaxy has Fermi bubbles, although it's generally safe to assume that if something's happening in one galaxy, it is happening in the others too. The bubbles were announced in just 2014 by a research team made up of a Harvard professor and two of his former students, meaning that the world of astrophysics has had less than a decade to figure out what's going on at the center of our galaxy. An exceptional phenomenon. Now, pointing out that these Fermi bubbles emit primarily gamma rays will still somewhat understate sheer amounts of energy that they give off. The Milky Way already emits plenty of gamma rays at all times, but the rays emitted by these Fermi bubbles 
bubbles are incredibly energetic compared to the rest of the galaxy. And this is coming from an area, as far as we can tell, just seems to be a bit of an aggregation of plasma. There are no known stars within the Fermi bubbles, no known celestial bodies of any kind, and the plasma that does exist there appears not to be so concentrated in any one spot that the Fermi bubble's internal gravity would lead a celestial body to be created. Instead, humanity's best guess of what's going on inside the Fermi bubbles traces back to what appears to be their origin, the supermassive black hole at the center of our galaxy. Now, we're not going to belabor you today with all the details of that black hole, although you're welcome to let us know in the comments if you'd like a separate video on that. This is astrographics after all. But suffice to say that by now, it is well known that supermassive black holes in other galaxies can ingest some seriously impressive mass from the surrounding space. And when they do, they can emit massive high-energy jets that beam outward on the same up-and-down plane where we perceive the Fermi bubbles to be. That would be above and below the Milky Way. As far as scientists can tell, the Milky Way supermassive black hole is not currently giving off that sort of explosive beam, but judging by a few key factors, it's entirely possible that the plasma currently sitting in the Fermi bubbles might have come from a beam like the ones we've seen elsewhere. Take for example the distance of the plasma bubble's outer edge from the center of our galaxy, some 25,000 light years, meaning that if matter was shot out of the Milky Way's black hole, it would have been impossible under our understanding of physics for matter to get there in less than 25,000 years. Probably because it's really hard to get matter to travel at the speed of light, it took considerably longer for the bubbles to form. Add to that the fact that the plasma of the Fermi bubbles is no longer concentrated into where it might have been as a beam, but is instead forming a sort of cloud, and it stands to reason that this might be what happens when those rare plasma beams have already been shot out into the void and now have to approach a sort of resting state. And what that means for other galaxies is pretty hard to say. Scientists have observed bubble-like structures around other galaxies before, but these are galaxies with supermassive black holes that are around a hundred to a thousand times the mass of the one the Milky Way center. As we mentioned previously, we've not experienced similar phenomena in galaxies like ours. Not only that, but we couldn't find bubbles in Milky Way-like galaxies if we tried. Our current instruments simply aren't good enough to see them from so far away. Perhaps these explosions happen frequently enough and the Fermi bubbles will disperse slowly enough that they'll sort of linger on in the cosmic periphery forever, occasionally getting another shot of plasma like a health nut making their way to the juice bar. Or perhaps the Fermi bubbles will dissipate quickly enough will be pulled back into our galaxy's black hole completely enough that most of the time a galaxy wouldn't have a Fermi bubble at all. In other words, maybe we just got lucky to see this phenomenon that doesn't come around very often. At present, the Fermi bubbles are expanding at a fraction of 1% of the speed of light, suggesting that at least on human timescales, they're probably going to be here a while. But how frequently the Milky Way shoots out these rays, or whether it does it at all, are critical pieces of missing information that prevent us from filling in this puzzle. What we do know is that the two Fermi bubbles seem to interact with each other. Combined, they're believed to contain roughly the amount of energy equivalent to a hundred thousand supernovas, all measured at the point of explosion. So it stands to reason that an interaction between them would be, well, fairly violent. But actually, that's not always the case. Elsewhere in the Fermi bubble's witness, we've got to point out that the gamma rays they emit seem to have an unexplainable cutoff point. Basically, they're emitted up to a certain incredibly high frequency, but no higher. And, well, we have no idea what that's about. Joining that odd anomaly within the realm of strange Fermi bubble things, oh, we could add the fact that they seem to be producing neutrinos, suggesting that some really wild subatomic interactions happen within that region. And as long as we're talking about weird shit, we can also bring up the fact that Fermi bubbles seem to include strange, unexplainable clouds, including high concentrations of metal that bounce around inside them. Why that is, we have no idea, and neither do scientists. And finally, we've got to point out just how new the Fermi bubbles seem to be. The research team that discovered them initially projected that the bubbles were somewhere between 1 and 10 million years old, and have since refined their estimates to indicate that they're about 3 million years old, implying that when something happened to cause them to form, early human ancestors were already running around the Earth. That particular age estimate is actually more interesting because of the questions that it 
it doesn't answer than the ones that it does. If the Fermi bubbles were, say, much older, then we could imply that they might be stable fixtures of galaxies like ours. If they were much younger, it would be easier to lend credence to the idea that they formed as the result of a cosmic explosion and have been expanding outward and slowing down at a consistent rate ever since. An age estimate of 3 million years indicates that there's a lot more work to be done before we nail down how the Fermi bubbles came to be. Some theories on causation. All right, at present, the best guess on what actually caused the Fermi bubbles is that our galaxy's supermassive black hole, which today is about as docile as a house cat on THC, might have been a lot more active in the past. The massive cosmic jets that we mentioned earlier, which may have produced the bubbles, don't tend to happen at random. Instead, they happen when a black hole ingests ludicrous amounts of material in a very short time. Belch of astronomy, a burp so powerful that it shoots gamma rays 25,000 light years into space. That would have required our supermassive black hole to be tens, but what scientists are now reasonably confident in going with, at least until we get a better theory, is that the bubbles might have formed during about 100,000 years of continuous activity from these jets. A slower moving bubble of hot gas emitting X-rays appears to be traveling outward in the same basic way. Named the Eresita bubbles, these are now thought to be the shockwave from the very same explosion. The accepted theory for the formation of Fermi bubbles comes from the concept of a lot of simultaneous or near simultaneous supernovas that may have occurred at a past stage of the Milky Way's lifespan when stars around the galaxy's center were a lot more tightly packed. In the base version of this theory, a whole lot of very similar stars would have formed at around the same time, gotten all together, and eventually gone supernova at around the same time, either because they all just happened to reach the right age at the right time, or because they were so tightly packed that a supernova in one triggered a supernova in many of the others. In this sort of mass explosion, perhaps the plasma now forming the Fermi bubbles would have swept outward in two directions in the star-sized equivalent of a puff of smoke. Now, there are a lot of holes in this theory, but the reason why we bring it up is to help get a sense of what might have caused our supermassive black hole to be so active in its earlier days. The implausible thing about the second theory isn't the idea that so many stars would have been so tightly packed for so long, it's the idea that they would have all gone supernova simultaneously in our galaxy, but not any others that we know of, and somehow that plasma could have created the Fermi bubbles. Either by the effects of its gravitational pull drawing those stars nearer and nearer, or by some other mechanism. That mass of stars could explain where a galactic-sized feast might have come from. After all, we have very few other ideas about what could have possibly made our black hole that active. Equally important to discuss is what the presence of Fermi bubbles might mean for the future of our galaxy. According to the scientists who discovered the bubbles, it's possible that the blast that caused the Fermi bubbles might have been so large that it would have disrupted something called the accretion disk, a rotating disk of matter that forms around a rotating body, like, for example, how our galaxy rotates around its supermassive black hole. These accretion disks are the place where stars form, but the presence of the Fermi bubbles implies an explosion so big that the Milky Way's accretion disk may have been pushed out by the astronomical equivalent of a shockwave. If that's the case, then because of the events that generated the Fermi bubbles, star formation may just about have wrapped up in the Milky Way. And we've got to consider what the Fermi bubbles tell us about that most elusive cosmic neighbor of ours, dark matter. The bubbles were actually discovered by accident as part of a mission to identify dark matter within the Milky Way, and although the bubbles themselves are not made up of dark matter, they might provide clues to this hypothetical building block of the universe. We're not going to get too deep into the studies that are currently trying to explain the Fermi bubbles using dark matter. Quite frankly, we'd be here all day trying to teach the required concepts to make sense of them. But put simply, it's possible that the Fermi bubbles themselves can be explained by the presence of fields of dark matter, not just in our galaxy, but in others. And if that's true, then scientists will likely discover more Fermi bubbles around more galaxies, and probably fairly soon. Not only that, but the presence of the Fermi bubbles has allowed scientists to explain the origin point of many gamma rays which had previously been unexplained and were thought to be produced by dark matter itself. And finally, we've got to throw one more curveball into this entire mix. If you remember how we've been saying throughout this video that the Fermi bubbles emit gamma rays, well, that might actually not be true at all. 
In 2022, a team of astrophysicists out of the Australian National University realized the location of the Fermi bubble's so-called cocoon, an inner layer where the majority of gamma radiation seems to come from, actually lines up perfectly with another celestial body positioned right behind it. It's sort of like closing one eye, putting your finger in front of the sun, and then supposing that since you can't see the sun, the halo of bright light you see is coming from your finger. This time, obviously, on a much larger scale. As it turns out, if you're looking at the Fermi bubbles from Earth Earth's vantage point, you're also looking in the direction of something behind them. The dwarf galaxy Sagittarius, which the Milky Way is currently in the process of tearing apart and absorbing. The Fermi bubble's cocoon happens to have the same shape and orientation as that dwarf galaxy, which is a highly unlikely coincidence, leading the research team to conclude that the gamma rays shooting through the Fermi bubbles at us might actually travel through the bubbles after being emitted from a bunch of pulsars in the Sagittarius galaxy. As of now, that work hasn't been replicated by other research teams, so we've got to take it with a grain of salt. But if their models are accurate, then we're going to have to rewrite a lot of what we thought we first knew you about Fermi bubbles. And we're not even going to get into the newest research from 2023, where a scientist from the Tokyo Metropolitan University has proposed yet another mechanism for the Fermi bubbles formation. But I mean, do check that research out if you're not confused already. Now, if your brain is reeling at the end of this explanation, let's depart with some key takeaways. Our galaxy has these strange bubbles of plasma shooting off gamma rays called Fermi bubbles. We have some theories on how they got there, but we can't even be remotely sure that any of them are true. They're not predicted by any theoretical model, and we don't know how long they'll last. And considering how young these gargantuan celestial bodies are, it's really strange that we don't know what caused them in the first place. And there's new research that could indicate that almost nothing we thought we knew about Fermi bubbles was true in the first place. Astrophysics, everybody. It never disappoints.